What's going on, Team Nerd Herd Podcast? It's your boy, Steve, a.k.a. Hip Hop Send Me, and I'm your host with the most tonight. But enough about me. Team Nerd Herd Podcast, we have a special guest in our studio tonight. Now, you might have seen some of his earlier work with Liberty Meadows. You might have seen some of his work with Marvel. Titles like Savage Wolverine, Mighty Avengers, and my favorite, Shanna the She-Devil. You might have seen also some DC covers like in Harley Quinn. And just last week, the punchline one shot just came out and he had a cover on that as well. If you're really into independent, then you know some of his character owned books like Skyborn. Down to the cherry on top with AWA Upshots Fight Girls. Not only is he the writer, but he's also the artist. And I can't wait to ask him about that book. Team Nerd Herd, give him a round of applause and a warm welcome. The one, the only, Frank Cho. Woo-hoo. All hey. right. Hey, guys. How's it going, Frank? I'm doing good. Uh, my, my heater broke, so that's why I'm wearing a scarf. It's kind of chilly in this, uh, my house right now. Uh, it's like 65 degrees. I'm getting it fixed in the morning, so don't worry about it. No problem at all. Want, we definitely want to say forward fashion, Frank. Most deaf. Frank. Frank. <laughs> Thank all you right. for attending the show. We really appreciate it. And the Team Nerd Her fa- viewers also appreciate it. They're big fans. Oh, don't thank me. Thank my uh, manager, Steve Morger. <laughs> he was twisting my arms to, uh, <laughs> to get on the show. Steve, thank you. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just curious. You're where you're in Maryland now, correct? Right. I live uh, just outside of Baltimore, uh, uh, nice. just south of it, uh, right by Columbia, Maryland. So are, is the blue crab as good as they say it is? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got to ask. I'm a fat kid. Dungeons Crab is my thing. Right, right. So I have to ask. Yeah. Um, so have you always been from Baltimore or? Uh, I actually, I was born in Korea, South Korea. And then I came over when I was six. And uh, yeah, I pretty much since then, I pretty much lived in Maryland. Uh, not too far from Baltimore all my life. Very nice. So how did how did you break break down or how did you kind of get into comic books? And, you know, we're... we're like to know what is your origin story like how did how did you start off um <laughs> so i started drawing as a kid and i never stopped and i drew for the school paper in college uh went to nursing school so i drew for the the, the diamond back which was a university of maryland student newspaper it's yes. a uh, it's a daily newspaper five days a week and so that's where i started doing uh university square um which was a precursor to liberty meadows right and then next thing i know i won like the best college uh <laughs> i won the best college cartoonist of uh of uh <laughs> of like 93 i think 93 or 94 and uh and that led into a uh, uh a syndication deal um so and i was going to nursing school at the time so I graduated from nursing school, got my uh, bachelor degree in nursing, and then cool. literally that night went straight into my room and start doing Liberty Meadows for uh, for syndication. And then uh, I did that for five years, and uh, and I just quit. I just couldn't handle the the, the censorship in the in the newspaper market, uh, yeah. so I quit with no job lined up or anything, and then. I was at Image for a short period of time, collecting Liberty Meadows as a comic book, and then, and then uh, Axel Alonso at uh, at Marvel recruited me, uh, hired me to revamp Shauna the She Devil, and then next thing I know, I'm at Marvel for 14 years, wow. uh, and then until Disney uh, bought Marvel and then pretty much got rid of all the exec- uh, um, uh, exclusive creator contracts. They just got rid of all of that. And then, uh, and then I went straight, uh, and then I got picked up by DC, you know, within the week. And then wow. I did Wonder Woman covers, which caused a big uproar. <laughs> and still then, great uh, covers, yeah. beautiful covers. I, I still don't covers. understand why. I have no idea why. <laughs> well, you know, it's you know, it's just like different <laughs> And then, uh, and then I went went from Wonder Woman straight into Harlequin and I was at Harlequin for gosh about 
uh, about like 75 covers, I think, or 70, wow. to 70 to 75 covers. Oh, so that's a long run. Yeah. 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 And then uh, now here I am. And uh, which is kind of weird because like, uh, I don't have any work from uh, Marvel or DC since the whole COVID layoff and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So since the so first time since 2003, I don't have any uh, work waiting for me for Marvel or DC. So it's kind of weird. That's crazy. What? I haven't heard that name Axel Alonso in a long time either. Actually, Axel is the uh, uh, the uh, editor in chief and uh, publisher at uh, AWA. Oh, okay. That's the company that I'm, gonna, I'm doing Fight Girls for. So what exactly is Fight Girls? Fight Girls is, uh, God, I don't want to give too much away. Uh, oh, come on. Tell me, has... Can you tell me if there's Jello in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, there is uh, great bodies, I must say. There's 10 Beautiful hot bodies. women. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so essentially, the, the queen of this uh, uh, Gilmore empire has, has to uh, abdicate because uh, she was proven barren. And she couldn't okay. produce a royal uh, heir. So um, in the old uh, charter or whatever constitution, they say if uh, if a queen can't bear any kid, uh, kid, you know, a new queen will be picked among these, uh, like, the, the fairest and the strongest and the smartest women from the empire are gathered and they're going to compete for the vacant queen's uh, throne. And whoever wins, there will be like uh, four challenges. And if they win, uh, whoever's left will become the new queen. And, you know, and so that's the basic setup. But there's like all these twists and turns. So it's like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of double dealing and a lot of adventure, a lot of action, but a lot of, you know, backhand. So a lot of political intrigue and all that. And at the end, there's like a wicked, wicked twist that people are not going to see coming. So uh, so I wrote this story about 10 years ago. I mean, I actually have like about like like a dozen stories that I, I've written in the last 20 years since college mm-hmm. that I've been sitting on. So Fight Girl is one of them. Uh, Skyborn was another one. Uh, Zombie King. So once I finish Fight Girl, uh, probably going to do Russian Red. Um gosh um war witch world of pain autumn so i got all these like stories all lined up wow that, that's cool that wow. i just have to like just you know I, I, start writing and drawing so you, are you going to be drawing okay so you've written all of these stories already are you going to be drawing all of them too or are you going to have someone else help you so autumn um uh, i decided that uh autumn will be uh, published by image comics so i've hired an artist to uh to draw it for me and it's uh it's axel medlin he's the guy who did elephant man oh okay oh, yeah so he's the same guy that did uh 50 girls 50 uh, oh that's awesome way back when about 10 years ago so i hired him to draw autumn for me so i'm gonna do like the the bookend so uh, i'm gonna uh write and draw the uh you know like i guess like the the introduction sequence and then the the last sequence so so autumn was created and written by uh my writing partner uh tom sagaski mm-hmm. uh he's a, a novelist so so tom and i uh we we're doing three projects together uh world of pain autumn and a uh, war witch those three stories that we're doing uh um he and i are co-writing and all the other one like russian red i'm writing and drawing it myself um uh What's the other one? Uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaur, not Cadillacs and Dinosaur, uh, uh, Guns and Dinos. I am, uh, I'm going to finish that up. And, God. Uh, I was going to say Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, I thought it was old. Right, too. right. God, I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> but I got like about, you know, like a dozen stories that, that I'm going to, you know. Publish. Jump. Okay. Yeah, cool. jump on to. So no, are you gonna Oh I'm okay. sorry. Well we'll just say <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Do you want a Rochambeau? No. <laughs> no. I, I was gonna ask, uh will will these uh future titles uh, you said you brought up image, will they also 
all, will they all be with Image, or are they going to be some with AWA Upshot? Um, no, so Fight Girl is with AWA, um, Autumn, War Witch, and World of Pain. That's going to be with Image. Uh, Russian Red, I have no idea who. And um, Guns and Dinos, uh, I, I don't know who. And uh, God, there's another title that I'm, I'm just... Oh, Coffin Maker's Daughter. I don't know who who's going to do that. Mm. Now that so, sounds... That's I like the title of that. Like, right. So it, it sounds it, it, like it's a kind of like a mix of everything. Like you're really dabbling into like different genres, right? Well, yeah, it's actually pretty fun because I grew up reading superhero books. And, uh, and none of these are superhero books. They're all yeah. basically fantasy, horror, and action, you know? Um, the Russian Red will w- probably going to be my next project that I'm going to be writing and drawing um, right after uh, um, Fight Girls. So okay. that, that one, I originally wrote it as a movie. And oh. um, and uh, it, because it takes place in Baltimore, it's it's basically uh, law. And, it's going to open up like a Law and Order, uh, you know, police like a police drama, like The Wire. The, yeah. yeah, I was going to say The Wire. And yeah. then and then That's it's just the going to it's going to just like segue into like what the fuck moment, you know? And uh, and <laughs> it's just going to get just you think is one one thing, but it takes a wicked turn, and you're like, oh, what the hell's going on, you know? That is the best kind of writing. It leaves you sure. on a cliffhanger and just takes you from one train of thought all the way to the other. Well, that's just what makes a ri- real rich book. So right. I can't well, like, that's what I do. I, I tend to like mix genres to kind of like throw people off. And uh, so when I write things, I write backward. Uh, so I would have the ending first. I write the ending first. And then from there, I try to steer the story into that ending. Okay. And uh, so, so like a lot of people... Um, you know, like people ask me, how do I, how do you write stuff? And I said, I, I, I do it backward, you know? And, uh, and then I sure. hate, ed- I hate editors that will try to change the ending. You know, I'm like, no, you can't change the ending because ending is always the most important to me in the story because I, I write backward. I start with the ending and then, you know, I saw the idea got started with your ending and then you went, you worked so backwards. Okay. Yeah. yeah pretty, for the most part. Every now and then, I, I would get like flashes of images, you know, uh, like scenes in my mind, and then yeah. I, I I write it all down and try to figure it out. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, try to piece it all together every every now and then. But usually, I have a strong ending in mind, uh, and then and then uh, go from there. That's what happened with Fight Girls. I started with the ending first, and then and then all the all the story just kind of wrote itself once that ending was you know established. <laughs> So that's cool because you usually hear people have the beginning and the ending and they're trying to figure out that middle part. Right. And it makes so much more sense not having a beginning and just kind of working backwards because you're not trying right. to fit everything into this jar. Right, right. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, uh, when it comes – when you're writing, you can't fall in love with your ideas. If it doesn't yeah. work, you have to throw it out. I mean, you, you don't try to shoehorn it, try to force it in. You know, because then it will screw up the entire story. So uh, there are many times where I had like a really great scene that just didn't fit into the overall story, and you have to just cut it. So those are always heartbreaking. But you know, for the for the overall uh, success of the story, you have to sometimes cut things out. So so looking at a clear palette, um, what do you what do you do? You listen to any music to inspire you? Um, in kind of building, you know, setting that mood and setting the tone to a story that you're kind of dealing with, or is there a different ap- approach that you kind of take so, um, as far as like music's concerned? So when I'm writing, it has to be completely silent. Okay. I can't have any noise. Um, but once I finish writing and once I'm start drawing, I usually have music or audio book on. Or, or even television, you know, usually uh, some like really talkative uh, TV show where I don't have to look up all the time. Um, so uh, like uh, Law and Order. I love Law and Order. Oh, yeah. It's a classic. <laughs> all right. And okay. uh, and I love all these like uh, sitcoms. Uh, and actually, I love like stand up comedy you know, when I'm uh, drawing. Who's but, your favorite? 
Who's your favorite uh, comedian at this moment? Ah, uh, God, I just went through a whole entire run of uh, Bill Bur uh, Burr. Oh my oh, God, God, yeah, He's Bill Burr is so hilarious. Bill Burr and One of the greats other, for sure. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeffries. Oh, Jim, uh, Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. Yeah, yeah, Jim Australian. Jeffries. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. really wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's funny as hell. <laughs> I and, saw a. Uh, What's his name? Uh, the small Kevin Hart just put up a new one. Yeah, he, he that just I came out. To watch. Is there any good? Out. I haven't listened I don't know. to any. I haven't listened to any Kevin Hart stuff. Yeah, his, he's, his he's other really stuff funny. is pretty good. Right. Uh, I really like him and uh, Leslie, the girl from from uh, Ghostbusters on Saturday Night Live. Leslie something. I can't okay. think of the the big African American lady. She's hilarious I, too. I didn't know she did come in a stand up comedy. Oh yeah! If you look on Netflix and find it, I can't remember the lady's last name, but she's right. hysterical. She'll make you cry. Uh, and I was listening to Dave Chappelle. Oh, oh, I love oh Chappelle. yeah, Dave Chappelle yeah. is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, can't go right. wrong with him, the master. Yeah, yeah, right. just right. such a mind, and then uh, enough to take you there. Right, right. So, yeah, so, so yeah, but music-wise, I listen to everything. Um, for a while, I was linked to a lot of bluegrass, <laughs> uh, bluegrass show tunes. I actually listened to a lot of show tunes. <laughs> I don't know why. I love show tunes. Any specific artists for bluegrass? Uh, it just started with the uh, um, when Old Brother Where Art Thou yeah. soundtrack oh, came yeah. out. Oh, yeah. I just couldn't get enough of it. Wow. And then from there, I started, you know, kind of branching out to the different artists. Uh, I can't tell you, you know. Names. Yeah. yeah. A lot of freaking banjos. Down, 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 down. Exactly. Right. You don't want to hear that banjo, though. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no deliverance, please. Yeah. Well, actually, and then uh, I went through like a long uh, uh, Johnny Cash phase where I just went through a shitload of Johnny Cash. Very cool. Was and, it because of the movie with uh, Joaquin Phoenix? No, no. Actually, uh, I got into Johnny Cash um, uh, long before that. I mean, uh, I think I, mean, I was a big Elvis fan, and then Elvis, and then went to Johnny Cash for some reason. Uh, it was kind of weird. It's like Elvis, Johnny Cash, like Beatles and Johnny Cash. You know, um, those are all classics. Well, that, yeah, it makes sense. Iconic. They came yeah. up together, so it's like they came right. from the same area. So yeah. yeah. One thing that I don't listen to at all is drives me gives me a headache is rap. I, I don't like rap. <laughs> you like hip hop? Huh? <laughs> right. I, I can say. understand that. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it. It, 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 yeah. Um say I'm a Zeppelin man myself. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's weird because like when I was growing up in the eighties, I didn't listen to any of the eighties music. But now I listen to a lot of '80s music. It's yeah, because it's nostalgic, right? <laughs> what? Well, it's nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, so in the '80s, I was listening to Beatles, Elvis and Beatles, and all the '50s, uh, yeah. '50s doo-wop and the '60s, uh, you know, um, uh, '60s stuff. Or Motown and all that stuff. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really get into Motown. Um, or more rock. Is that what you said in the 60s? Yeah, it was uh, more, um, uh, it was more uh, Jimi Hendrix kind of type stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane. Probably more than some. Yeah, yeah, some more, yeah, that, more, okay. more psychedelic kind of stuff. Bill Moore. Yeah. Cream, yeah. stuff like that. Right, right. The uh, the animals, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, Credence. Oh yeah, Credence. Gotta love Credence. And then, yeah. uh, and then, and then in the eighties, I um, just went, you know, went into uh, you know um, Elvis, Beatles, and and uh, Johnny Cash and stuff like that. And then all the classics, yeah. Yeah, and then it's just kind of like now it's it's funny as hell because like now I listen to all the eighties stuff <laughs> that was popular, you know, like Madonna, Michael Jackson. Uh, Prince, there's no, there's no Prince. shame in that. Prince, it's, uh, it's yeah, it, it's, it's weird. And then, uh, and then my music taste kind of stopped in the mid '90s. Okay, mm -hmm. anything beyond mid '90s and up, uh, I, I don't, I don't care or recognize, <laughs> except for like really big ones, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, it's it's hard to kind of uh, 
really pick good artists as so much stuff is coming out you kind of yeah. weed it down and you have your pockets of a uh, different type of music that you kind of yeah. select. It's actually, it's actually pretty fun because like uh, uh, my musical taste kind of like stopped or I, or I just stopped caring for music once I hit uh, my late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. After that, it's like the new music that was coming out is like, I don't care. I don't don't want to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's bizarre, you know? No, we uh, we all get there. There's there's a moment in my life when I just like stop listening to new music. Uh, I'll hear whatever's popular, but right, I really don't follow like I used to when I was young. Right, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. I know, like for myself, I listened to all the pretty much '90s and before. Just how I am, and I because I went to high school in the '90s, so. No, you guys are just a bunch of kids. <laughs> Uh, I don't feel that much of a kid. I'll be 42 on Saturday. So I, I kind of roll out of bed sometimes and uh, aches and pains. <laughs> That's right. It's like, oh, my back. <laughs> We're young uh, skirt. Yep. I, actually, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I threw my back out uh, <laughs> a month ago. Mm -hmm. I was brushing my teeth and, yep. uh, and I was like reaching for my cup. And I think I, think I sneezed or something. Oh yeah, and then uh -huh. I threw my back out. Yep. that happens. Oh. That happens all the time with me. I just a hard yeah. sneeze and just like right. just tighten up. Yep. And then you can't move. It's like everything. It's like so much pain. Right, right. It, it's like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I was I was gonna say. So you mentioned that you got a degree in nursing, right. and and you decided. Why did you decide to? do comic books as opposed to um you know kind of going and and being a nurse uh i've always wanted to be like a comic book artist or a book illustrator um uh, yeah. but it was coming from a very typical korean uh asian family they put tremendous pressure on me to become a doctor or an mm -hmm. engineer and my older brother became an engineer uh and then i be and my parents put so much pressure on me to become a doctor you know uh instead i kind of went into nursing school because it was shorter program and i'm surrounded by women and i look good in white you know yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like a champ yeah exactly so uh that's why i went to nursing school just to uh, get my parents off my back you know and but do they know how like popular you are um with 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 any any comic book related items i mean do do they know they're like oh my god this is my son uh no uh like uh asian parents are brutal uh they don't yeah. give a shit <laughs> it's all about money to them you know uh -huh. so my mom my parents just give me hell uh for the longest time um uh, um, because I was drawing comics, I was doing Liberty Meadows. I was a syndicated cartoon newspaper cartoonist. They didn't give a shit about that. Uh, and and then you know I was working at Marvel. They didn't care. I mean, they really cared when I first bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> you have and property. Then, yeah. And then, and then they realized, like oh, they set that high expectation. <laughs> yeah, he's actually successful. You know, because uh, my mom used to uh, tell me to get a real job, get a, use my nursing degree, get a real job at the hospital and do, do my little cartooning, you know, for fun over the weekend. And, uh, and it's just like, I mean, I love my mom, but you know, yeah. Jesus Christ woman, you know, uh, <laughs> you need to take her to cons right. where yeah. there's like lines around the, the block. Yes. For, just People for you. Just gawking and just staring like that's Frank Cho. Oh my God. Years ago, you had a Kickstarter for uh, this little beauty. Oh, okay, know. yeah. Yeah, I uh, ended up getting this mainly because okay. of, and I still got it somewhere in here. I got, if I can find the right one. Where is she? This beautiful piece. Oh, ah. my God. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean Doom Kitty. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, by the way, for this. <laughs> I also got that ass. That's, it's somewhere else. That's but, a special uh, ingredient wheat cakes. I know it. That's kind of where I ran into you from because of her. And I was just kind of curious, how did that all kind of come about? Uh, I mean, like, uh, I've known John Flask uh, uh, for a while, for about almost 20 years at this point. 
uh, about 15 years. Uh, and um, so he and I, we, you know, we just good friends. And then when he started his publishing company, um, uh, he contacted me. I was like one of his first contacts to, uh, to do an art book. And we've been talking about it for a while. And I want to do like a, almost like a how to book, you know, because I get so many people asking me, how do you draw the female figure faces? And, and then, you know, and I would, and I would show them how, and then, and then I basically would write down eventually start writing notes, you know, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to just pull the trigger, just do a how to book because people are asking me nonstop, you know, how do you do, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? So. So I basically took all my notes and illustrated it. And um, it was kind of a half how-to book and half art book. Yeah. And um, and launched it as a Kickstarter, you know, and then it took off like a rocket. Yeah. Um, I still can't draw. I tried copying your art. I can't draw. Right. Stick figure. I can get a little booty on there. That's about it. Right, right, but right. I'm curious, did you take your, your background in nursing and kind of use that towards your learning how to draw and stuff i mean or enhance your drawing i guess anatomy uh, for sure right I mean, it it it, it, uh, it basically enhanced my uh understanding of the anatomy a little bit uh, more but no i mean most of it is uh it was, i it was i was self-taught as a as a kid um like one of the big books i started learning uh by copying was uh, how to draw the Marvel way by Stan, you know, by John Buscema and Stan oh, yeah. Lee. So I would copy John Buscema's uh, uh, drawing. You know, every page I would copy it, uh, and then, and then I guess just from the sheer act, act of copying, you start learning. And then, so when I was a kid, I would copy everything. I mean, I went through a big John Byrne phase where I would copy all these John Byrne drawings, you know, Alpha Flight, Fantastic Four, X-Men, and uh, John Buscema. I mean, the, the guy that I really uh, looked up to and was copying was uh, uh, Don Newton, uh, Batman. Okay. And then, uh, you know, and then you had, and then Frazetta and Al Williamson. So, and so you just keep practice drawing and eventually you just kind of absorb everything. You absorb all of their style and their anatomy, uh, and then, and and then slowly becomes your own style after a while. So, so you, you're you basically, as you keep working, you kind of start mentally, kind of like throwing away stuff that doesn't work for you, and you know, and you know, it's it's weird. I mean, like, um, once you once you stop trying to ape uh, like another artist. Once you stop mentally, stop doing that, your style comes out. Okay. So you take yeah. all, this, all this inspiration, to <coughs> inspirations eventually become you. You create yeah. your own style. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, like, to be honest with you, I mean, like, uh, I really don't feel that my style didn't come out until, like, about 12 years ago. I mean, uh -huh. in, uh, I mean, like Shauna, Shauna the Sheeta was a mess. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I look at that thing. And I'm like, God, this is terrible. Really? I, oh my I, God, I love it. I think she's freaking right. sexy. I thought my style didn't really start develop, really start coming out until Mighty Avengers. And that was like 2007, around there. Yeah, time. I can see that. Yeah. That's when I started by discovering right. your art. Yeah. And then I thought the, the work that I'm really proud of is uh, the new Ultimates that I did with Jeff Lowe. I, mean, right. I, I thought that's the book that a lot of people overlook, but I feel that that was like the most I really, you know, uh, put into. So just go, referring to that, I love that work and it's, you put so much detail. It, it reminded me of like George Perez when he would have like cracks in, in like the armor. I mean, I could see all those details that you put in to that particular series. It was amazing. Actually, it's a, George Perez wasn't my uh, my inspiration or influence. Uh, the guy that I was I really was looking up to is uh, Jeff Darrell. So, yeah. like, if Jeff Darrell he did uh, 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 hard boiled, uh, rusty, and uh, uh, oh shit, uh, uh, big boy is it? Rusty and big guy, big guy and rusty. Yeah, I know. Uh, the... Shaolin cowboy. Yes, I remember. Yeah. That. 
So oh so like gosh. so Jeff Darrell is like my favorite artist right now. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, me too. So yeah, so uh, so so like New Ultimates uh, is you know is my favorite work that I've done at Marvel. It, it's not Mighty Avengers or Savage Wolverine. It's it's a New Ultimate. And Savage Wolverine is a close second. You could tell though, like this, that was great. But I, I love Savage Wolverine because I'm a big Wolverine fan. Right. Yeah. And just some good. of those covers you look at, you just like, how long did it take you to do these covers? Because I'm looking at it going, Jesus, this is oh. amazing. Oh, um, it takes me about two, three days, you know, because I would like, wow. uh, um, I guess Savage Wolverine is the was right around the time that I was really start experimenting with different, um, um, medium, you know, so I was, I would like do the uh, ink drawing of Wolverine and in the background would be like a ballpoint pen okay. or, uh, or watercolor and stuff like that. So I was just mixing stuff up. So Savage Wolverine is the one that I was like really start just, you know, just playing around. I definitely think that's one you're more underrated just because when everyone, at least when I think of you as an artist, I think you as, as a, the female figure. Right. But doing something like Wolverine, when you did it, it was just like, okay, this guy's got some serious fucking chops. Right. I mean, you did some other great stuff prior to that, but it was like, you're doing a male figure and you're going and doing it just as amazing as right. you do Jean Grey. Right, right. You know, well, thank, thank you. You're welcome. I mean, it's it's like I said, we're all huge fans of you. So right. It's it's one of those things where it's great. There's there's some amazing artists out there. Right. But you're one of those artists that can do different things. Oh, thanks. And a lot of people see for this one thing, but it's like, yeah, dig deeper. You right. find some other some great stuff, like the old Liberty right. Meadows stuff is even fun to read and. Right. I mean, I was. I was at Marvel for 14 years, and uh, the two books that I regret not doing uh, is uh, Fantastic Four because I was a huge John Byrne Fantastic Four fan. Yeah. Um, you know, and and Stanley Jack Kirby the original run. So I was a huge fan of that. So, and uh, and I never really got a chance to do Fantastic Four, and and another big project that I really wanted to do um was conan but marvel lost the license to dark horse uh, uh so you know and so i never got to do conan and uh, oh, you know, uh and uh, on savage avengers now right so so those two projects i kind of regret not not giving the chance you know um when oh. i was at marvel um at tc the book that I really wanted to do was uh, was uh, uh, actually two books uh, was uh, Swamp Thing because I was a huge fan of uh, Bernie Wright's and Swamp Thing, right. and uh, and I'm also a big horror guy. I love horror, and I'm right there uh, with you, and and I love Lobo, uh, especially Simon oh, Bisley's yeah. uh, Lobo run. Uh, so I kind of wish I had, you know, I could have done like a Lobo one shot or something like that. So those two projects at DC, I kind of regret not, you know. Uh, Lobo is one of those characters that's just so underrated. Right. And right. I, could, I could see you having a fun time with Lobo. Right. And actually, there's another story that I really wanted to do, um, but um, uh, it just just didn't happen. Is uh, is this kind of like a Wonder Woman story? Uh, it was a Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Power Girl team up story that I wrote, and uh, and for for I pitched it to them, and then for whatever reason, uh, I'm not sure what happened. Um, I think they basically, I think it was like Dan and Jim Lee, uh, Dan DeDio and Jim Lee, kind of said, "Well, let's do this other thing first. Kind of they kind of segue me into a, but I I think you know. You know, if they just you know, let me do it, give me the green light, I, I think it would have been, been like a top seller. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that, I, no, you, that's you another have my story. money. You take oh, my yeah. money. That's another story that I wrote backward. I had I started with the ending. So it's and uh and so it's actually really cool. Um uh and so they're like really really great scenes with uh um basically I wrote Wonder Woman as Captain America. 
and mm-hmm. and you know and and Power Girl as kind of like She Hulk type character and uh, and um, uh, and Supergirl as kind of like a like a like a Spider Man you know kind of like a young kind of a young energy to it you know so and they're they they're basically um, uh, going a uh, secret mission to uh, um, uh, save Superman you know. And uh, so it's actually a really great scene where it's like really great sequence, uh, you know, because, you know, I don't like Superman. I think Superman's a pussy. Uh, yes. <laughs> I yeah, agree. Yeah. I agree. I do, I do he's good enough. Oh. He's, he's a strong pussy. Yeah. God, I have, I have, one of my good friends is a huge Superman fan. Right, and now, I right always, now, Frank, you're hurting him. <laughs> I, no, I always hurt him. Because I give him hell all the time. He's a New York Giants fan, right. a Mets fan, and a Superman fan. I'm just like, you just want pain, don't you? Right. You just want like the three crappiest things possible. Right. So yeah, so I mean, it's it's like great sequence where you know I really wrote, um, you know, I, I I don't write genders, you know. To me, when I write characters, I don't see gender. I just like write them as, you know, different personalities. You know what I'm saying? Okay. whether they're male or female it doesn't even come into it you know um so i i wrote like wonder woman as a complete and utter badass you know she doesn't take any shit and like her her basically mentality is like you know the the quickest way from point a to point b is is through you you know and so so they're in this like really time sensitive mission and she is just like crazy i mean she got the, the, I don't know, I made up this freaking magic sword that she got from the Amazon, you know? Oh, my God. And she is just like, uh, you know, they have to get to, they have to save Superman. So they they got to go through all these levels. And it, it's just like, you know, it's like game of death. You know, oh, she's I was just, just like, gonna say that. <laughs> and she's just like, just like killing everything, just level by level. She's just killing everything. And, uh, and so, and uh, you know, I, I, you know, I thought I thought it was great, you know, and uh, and I think uh, I think DC passed on it. <laughs> you should write a story like that, or just use different characters, and not use like a Wonder Woman, or just like a Wonder Woman type. Well, I mean, the, I, the, the the thing is, there are a couple of elements in the story that is like tied to a you know uh, the mythos. Uh, yeah, to to a certain DC character. Ah. Uh, so if it if it's just a generic character, you know, as a stand-in, it doesn't yeah. work. Mm-hmm. So, so who knows? I, I may actually just you know uh, just write and draw the whole thing, and then just like give it to DC and say you guys can publish it or you don't. You know. <laughs> so speaking of myth- mythos, where did the wheat cakes come from? Oh uh, God, uh, wheat cakes. Uh, I'm a Spider Man is my favorite character. Oh, oh, oh JR. Okay, Frank. Why? Okay, now, just to kind of derail uh, a little bit. Why is Spider Man your favorite character? Is because he's funny. I mean, I grew up reading Spider Man uh, uh, when uh, John Romita Jr. and Roger Stern uh, uh, Roger they are. <laughs> was was writing it. So this is the first time. Uh, John Romita Jr. was doing his first uh, uh, rotation as Amazing Spider-Man. So they caught me at that right age, and and I, I loved it. I mean, the the humor, the you know, and and he's not like Superman or Batman where they can they you know they can fix everything. You yeah. Know? Spider-Man will mess up. You know, he will screw up. You know, fuck well, up. He will, you know, he will get his ass cry kicked afterwards. Yeah, and he'll you know, and then and then he you know, he's running around dealing with like real life problem, like paying the rent, you know, uh, like you know have to uh, uh, you know get the medicine to uh, Aunt May, <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that, you know. So I really love that, and um, and then I, and then uh, and then uh, this was like in the early eighties. Uh, Marvel started publishing Marvel Tales, which was reprinting all the Steve Ditko, Stan Lee original Spider Man. Yeah. So I, I read the original Spider-Man through the reprints, and I mm-hmm. loved it even more, you know. And uh, so Spider-Man just it just connected me at at a, at that that age, you know. We and, applaud, we applaud about that because we Jr. on a weekly basis goes out of his way to talk shit about Spider-Man. 
Well, like, there's that. a new issue of Spider-Man that came out last week, and he got his neck snapped. And I had the biggest shitty and grin afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's how <laughs> twisted I am. <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. It was like his birthday present. Yeah, you would, you would, you would never tell. You could never tell that it was his birthday present. He was like, "Oh hell yeah, we got this group text going," and I'm just sitting there like, "What a hater!" <laughs> give Pete, give Pete some love for God's yeah, you sake. Know, uh, Pete's, you know, banging uh, Mar- Mary Jane. Mary Jane you know? right? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, he's yeah. blessed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> JR's just jealous, you know. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, you know? So the wheat cake came from the original Spider-Man, you know, when uh, Uncle Ben was, you know, uh, he's like, Peter's flexing his arm, and Uncle Ben is like, you know, checking out his muscles and say, hey, don't don't feed him too much, you know. Uh, you know, I can't wrestle him anymore or something like that, you know. And, you know, yeah, and then they made a reference to wheat cakes, you know. Uh, and so I thought that was just, I thought that was that, wheat cakes was just so funny to me yeah and then i just started using that in my sketch covers you know it uh, started out with the outrage stuff uh and then it kind of segue into wheat cake stuff and now it's just like people can't get enough of wheat cakes you know i i want a healthy order myself frank right in front of my face live and in charge we have we need that recipe we need that recipe yeah actually a couple of fans uh which show was it? Uh, it was, was it Dallas? It was a Mark Walter show uh, in Texas somewhere. It might be Dallas or Arlington or, or something like that. Oh, so a couple of fans uh, made wheat cakes. <laughs> 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 they actually dug up the recipe. Uh, essentially, it's buckwheat cake. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so they made it. And say they brought it to me at my signing, and uh, and you know they say, hey, we made wheat cakes for you. You know, would you like to try it? You know, here I am. You know, like they could have poisoned it. You know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but you know, here I am. I was, oh, all right, let's try it. <laughs> so like the the three of us, you know, uh, you know, we got paper plate and we ate wheat cakes. <laughs> <laughs> at my table. That's awesome. That's funny. Johnny oh cakes. Got to love. And uh yeah, and it's it was it wasn't bad. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, tasted like you know, just regular buckwheat cake. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, there's a photo of me eating it. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll dig that up and put that on here. I'll find it. Right. <laughs> yeah, cuz I actually got lucky. I saw one of your pieces when I was I think it was New York Comic Con in like 2015. Right where someone had got it and i was just like just wow it was just i, I want to say it was a she hulk one that i saw yeah and it's the, i mean it's just funny how like uh i, I seem to kind of stumble into uh um into what's popular or i make it popular you know yeah i mean like i stumble into the whole shot of the she devil and the whole kind of that jungle girl genre just kind of uh exploded again and then you know and then deja thoris you know the egg rice burl De- oh, deja yeah. thoris you know i started drawing that as fun and then people picked up on it and then uh and then i did the whole um uh, dinosaur thing and then dinosaur kind of got you know popular again and then outrage thing which was uh it was me just kind of like you know thumbing my nose at the at all the prudes you know over the monera cover oh, yeah. and, and, I, and i didn't really expect anything of it and then that just kind of took off like a rocket um and then uh, and then wheat cakes you know again it was just just for fun and then it just like caught on and just like we cake this we cake that you know <laughs> don't do you have I, I think i saw somewhere you have a collected edition right of all of the outrage and some wheat cakes uh, yeah yeah, book, yeah. Right? most of it yeah um where where can we get that uh go to uh um uh, sequentialart.com oh yeah uh, okay so it's essential essential sequential Right, right. Essential sequential. Okay. The, yeah, so they have it. You know, uh, I think it's selling out. I mean, I think they they told me they got only got a couple of boxes left. So I'll, I'll send you the uh, um, the website. 
I'll text you the website. Oh, that's perfect. All right. That's perfect. That so, definitely would be awesome. So I got a question. I know everyone asks you, what's your favorite character to draw? What's your favorite piece of anatomy do you like to draw? Uh, it depends on the day. I mean, right now it's the, it's the ass. The dad ass. <laughs> Where's your mind, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it fluctuates. It's, 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 it's the boobs or the ass, you know, and just go back and forth, back and forth, you know. Yeah, they usually go back and forth. That makes sense. <laughs> exactly. You know, the whole ATM, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect so frank I, I was wondering um in looking at some of your dc work i i really two covers really kind of spoke out to me and um just the details here um yeah. I, I think this is absolutely amazing the face off with harley quinn and punchline but i also like this as well um I mean, this is just beautiful. Oh, thank you. And uh, I just wanted to know where where did you start as far as in that drawing process? Where did you start? Where did you come up with the ideas, you know, for these covers? Because I mean, these really are amazing. I mean, so detailed, and um, I mean, they're just so unique. And I, I'm just a huge fan. So I just wanted to know what was the process in in drawing that. You, you know, it's it's weird. I, I really don't know. I mean, like, uh, you know, some of the ideas just pop in my brain completely fully formed. And it's just me just translating that image in my mind down onto the paper. And, and but most of the time, it's just I have this image of this one figure. Once I have that one figure down, then it just kind of like from that one figure, it kind of branches out the, 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 the image almost like, you know, uh, like, 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 like a water droplet. It just kind of spreads. And, and you know, that punchline cover was that uh, punchline number one cover. Oh, yeah. With all the horsemen coming out. Um, that was that. I had the image of, uh, of punchline holding a knife and, you know, point out, like uh, touching the tip saying get the point. So that image just popped in my brain. And then as I was drawing it, you know, like the, these images of the four horsemen just start coming out. You know, the more I drew the figure, it started kind of like coming out. And then so, and that's what I did, you know. Um, but with that, uh, that Harley Quinn number 75 cover, that, oh, yeah. that image just came out fully formed. It was just like, boom, it was in my mind. And then, so it's it's i don't know how i don't know how to explain to you i mean it's 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 just the way i guess just the way my brain works you know so but but those are those images that comes fully formed those are always the uh they're pretty rare but most of the time it's just i have part of the image down and then just by just at the act of drawing and sketching the rest will will come out thank you very much for kind of giving us a breakdown on that i mean th this this really spoke to me walking through my lcs the, the those two covers just popped out at me immediately right. and uh, i just wanted to kind of uh, get the gist of, of your process so thank you for that well i mean so so the background image is all like ink line work and uh, so i'm a big fan of franklin booth um so uh i discovered franklin booth through bernie rison's uh, frankenstein and so when I was a kid, when I looked at Bernie Rice and Franklin, I just blew me away. And then I was reading and then he was basically, Bernie said that he was uh, inspired by Franklin Booth. And then, and then like a bloodhound, I started like digging through the library looking for Franklin Booth. And then that's when I discovered Franklin Booth and then saw that what he was doing. So, uh, so the, the punchline and the Harley Quinn cover the background image, you know, I was trying to, uh, you know, it was inspired by Franklin Booth, all that line work. Yeah, it's amazing. Very detailed. Right. Just, I'm in love with it. Yeah, and I, I can't wait to see that when you start doing like the horror type stuff you're talking about doing, because it's such a, at least for me, I don't, I don't, I see you do detail, but horror seems like a different genre for me, for you. And oh I, God, horror was be interesting. Horror was always my first love. 
um, <laughs> um, it's God. You should see some of my uh, my uh, my. God, I wish I still had it. Uh, I had this uh, sketchbook and actually notebook uh, uh, paper uh, that I drew on at, in my middle school, and uh, and it was just like the whole zombie craze, you know, from the, uh, it, you know, from uh, Romero's uh, right. uh, Day of the Dead. Dead. No, the Day of the Dead. Hmm. With, with the helicopter and the, the zombie oh, yeah. kid, you know. It was the, yeah. the one at the mall. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the original one, the one at the mall. So, so I saw that and, uh, and you know, went to, uh, you know, went to Arrow's uh, videos, you know, store, you know, got the, mm-hmm. you know, got the Betamax. <laughs> you know a copy of it and watched it and it was like so so i started drawing all these like hard stuff uh as a kid you know like middle school so and you know and then i saw um uh john carpenter's the thing one of the best horror movies ever made i had have to agree definitely uh you know and uh and saw that uh rob uh raw boat boatines special effects of the, the the thing you know where he's like stretching and all that i mean the guy was freaking genius i never saw anything like that in my life i mean you know and yeah. you know, at, when you're like uh you know when you're like sixth seventh grade seeing that it just blew my mind and then you know and then you have that uh the the freddy krueger uh nightmare on elm street i think part two i think there's a scene where freddy basically rips his you know, head, you know, like the skin off his head. Oh, you know, yeah. The pulse, pulsating blood out oh, of the yeah. brain. And that, I think that was Rob Botin, too. <laughs> Probably. And, Part, uh, part two scary, man. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then, stay with me. And then, like, and then I saw, like, uh, 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 Cameron's Aliens. I mean, I actually prefer the sequel yeah. more than the, than the original. It's one of the few sequels that's that, that way. Right, and uh, I remember just God. I mean, Aliens uh, was like one of the big moments in my life where it just kind of like blew my mind away because it just. I guess I remember I was I was like uh, I was like seventh or eighth grade because I, I saw two movies that afternoon. It was one was Aliens, and one was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Two great <laughs> movies, classic, nice. classics. Wow, those are two like, completely different work? movies. It's so different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Night remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing it with my buddy uh, uh, Augie and uh, and Chris. Uh, we went and saw the movie. And you know, back then, you know, your parents just like go to the mall, spend a whole day, yeah. you know. And so we watched two movies. And I remember uh, saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I thought it was hilarious i thought it was like and then we went to see aliens like right after because it's like literally it worked out perfect you come out of one and then you go to the other one yep and i remember it blew my mind that uh the concept of terraforming terraforming planets it just it just like literally i was like holy shit you know it's like it just like blew my mind and then you have the the, the colonial marines going in and i'm like holy crap and then you have the uh, the, the the power loaders where ripley's in you know like walking like going it's just like one thing after another and then and then and then there's the aliens and then you have the queen and you're like going oh, it's just like it just kept you know going you know going and my brain was like oh my god this is like just absolutely incredible so like so, so you know I saw so watch aliens you know every time I feel like uninspired I, I watch aliens you know to <laughs> cool. you know, to, uh, yeah. to get inspired. Well, and, hopefully uh, Marvel will let you do a do a cover now they own aliens. Do they? Oh yeah, that's right. They yeah, the, the 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 queen alien is now a Disney princess. It's the wicked queen of Disney. <laughs> the ultimate wicked queen. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Right. Um, <laughs> sorry. What's, wrong with, what's wrong with her <laughs> I'm a Star Wars fan and I just can't stand what she did with the, the last three movies uh, oh with the uh, what's that uh, Rise of Skywalker right, 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 Jedi, right, and all right, that right, junk right. yeah actually uh, I just finished watching The Mandalorian season one. <laughs> oh, nice well, and what do, you, what do you think what what do you what think do you about think, The Mandalorian uh, Oh, I, I thought like it was it? great. I thought it was great. I didn't you know, like the 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 first couple of episodes. It was like pure spaghetti western. 
Oh, oh yeah. And then and then it turned into uh, Yojimbo, you know, a Lone yep. Wolf and Cub, you know. And uh, so, you know, like, so I like Star Wars. I don't love Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So, so my buddy, uh, Mike McSwiggan, who's a huge Star Wars fan. So he was explaining to me about the black lightsaber at the end, you know? Oh yeah. Dark, dark saber, yeah. And, and I was like going, Jesus, where did you find all that out? And he's like, Oh, you need to see the, the, the clone war and, you know, and all that, and all that crap. Right. And so, <laughs> so he, he was explaining to me and, and he said, if you really want to see a really good star Wars, see that, I guess that the animated, you know, the clone war stuff, you know, yeah. it yeah, actually yeah. is a lot of backstory. Right. Right. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed The Mandalorian, um, and I, I haven't seen any of the season two yet because I don't have Disney Plus. Um, I just wait until you know, um, uh, you know, wait till the season's over, then watch it for get the Disney right. Plus for a month. Right, right, right. So I'm just curious. You said that AWS or the AWA Upshot book is coming out. Right, artist, when writers, is- artisan. That's what that stands for? Artists, writers, artisans. Yeah. Okay. Studio. I did not know that. Yep. So it is called what again? Fight Girls. Fight Fight Girls. Girls. Fight Girls. When is that coming out? Because I need to get that on my saver. So uh, so the the COVID really screwed up uh, the schedule. And oh. also uh, actually mostly it's my fault. I mean, it's just I I, I got so sidetracked with doing covers. Um, it was originally supposed to come out um, uh, this year in, in uh, at San Diego in the summer. Yeah. Uh, but I missed the deadline, or actually, miss. Um, I, I was going full steam, and then COVID hit, and then I got the pencil down order, and then uh, I could have just kept on going, but I stopped, you know, because yeah. I had so much cover work. Right, and then uh, and I picked it back up, and then uh, and then we're supposed to launch in January, this coming up January. Um, but they decided, you know, because I'm working on issue number four right now. It's a five issue miniseries, mm-hmm. so I'm working on issue four, and and they decided, you know, with the still with the COVID going strong, they decided to kind of put it on hold a little bit, and they said they preferred that I finish all five issues before they launch, which is smart. So right now the tentative launch date is June. Uh, okay, June Mark of next year. Calendars, team yeah. editor, podcast viewers. So I, I mean the the thing about uh, the thing about giving me a flexible deadline is I'm not going to finish it until there's like a hard deadline. <laughs> <laughs> so it's better if they would have said December first. Right, and right. Like okay, I'm done. Because like you know the problem is like if I have too much time, I keep. Tinkering, tinkering, noodling, and tinkering. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll, you know, I would, I would have like a finished page drawn, and then I'll like, ah, eh, it could done. I could have done something a little bit better, and I will redraw the page. You know, I would destroy the old page and redraw the, you know. Oh man. So like, I do that wow. because like, because I'm crazy. Because like, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm one of those guys that will br- burn the bridge, so I, I can't mm-hmm. retreat. <laughs> so. So when it comes to art, that's me, you know. <laughs> Balls to the wall. Yeah, I, I will like cut the cut the rope off the boat, and have it and have it float away, <laughs> and I'm charging in. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. Right. So, so now, yeah, yeah, June. Oh, we we can't wait, Frank. Now, is there um, any uh, handles or any? you know, uh, things that you want to plug in in any future projects or can you tell our Team Nerd Herd podcast where they can follow you and find you on any social media outlets? Uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, Frank Cho Artist. So I, I update it uh, every day. Uh, so uh, you get all the latest news up there. And also on Facebook, uh, Frank Cho Artist. <laughs> and Definitely it's- follow him. All right, so essentially it's the same thing I put on Instagram, but you'll get a bigger image. Oh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not cropped, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's like a square in Instagram, but in Facebook you'll get the whole image. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, and would you like to send us uh, our viewers off? Uh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there you guys heard know. it. He heard it first from Frank. DJ Abomination.